Big Ten foes. So do or do not join us on the Patriot League on ESPN here at Ridley Athletic Complex. There is no try. Glenn Clark alongside Chris Gunkel. Chris, let's meet our players to watch. We begin with the visitors and Russell Melendez. Local product from Archbishop Spalding High School. Current Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. Had a career high four goals against Georgetown. He certainly did. And, of course, they started off so strong, 3-0 on the season, thanks in part to his performance. For the Greyhounds, we mentioned him at the top, Luke Stout. And he was stout last week, Glenn, the current inside lacrosse player of the week. Registered 19 saves against the Terps. Not a bad way to start the season. He was seeing the ball so incredibly well, stopping 73% of the shots that he had faced. A few other starters for Johns Hopkins, to your point. We brought up Degnan, Grimes, and Bauer, Matt Collison, Cameron Chauvet, Jonathan Peshko as the Greyhounds get on the board first. Looking at the scouting report, taking advantage of, of Hopkins' slow feet defensively, and you see there a great job on that execution. Pacho to James. Evan follows it up with a face-off win. He's got a step. Pacheco all the way inside, and he gets it to go. Boy, Pacheco, and you noted this earlier, came in at 18%. Well, he's won the first two. Now Charles Street. Marcel gets a hand on it, but unfortunately, ball trickles it. And we're going to see a different face-off specialist for Hopkins instead of Dunn. Almost a little bit of a buddy pass there. Getting open low and scoring low to low is Minicus. Well, it, you know, that's really a shame for Marcel because of how he's he's got started and what the job he's play at this level of competition and you create an unsettled situation for the other team, it's dangerous. It's incredibly dangerous. Minicus was just in wide open, just north of goal line extended. Ten second difference between shot clock and game clock, although I don't think Hopkins is thinking about that. They just got to get a good look and try to get on the board. Running shot and that one will go. A bouncer off the stick of Brendan Grimes. Well see, that's what those down screens caused. It caused a mismatch there. So Sherwood lets Grimes, as you can see here, get to the middle of the field. Loyola defensively has to recognize that and I'm assuming they're going to want to slide quickly with a long pole if possible. Slide comes with maybe to run the offense in a manner that they'd like. The shot clock reset because the ball was briefly turned over and out of nowhere shooting low and scoring Dylan Binney. But he has the stick in his left hand. It takes away his opportunity to, to, to fire a shot quickly. Maybe that surprises Marcel. First assist, fifth point on the season. Austin Cote now in for Loyola. And a stinger. Maybe a situational substitution. Again, I don't know if this is a Marcel having to go from left to right. As you see here, it's Higgins, a left-hander, lets it rip from the right. And again, maybe that surprises Marcel because this. And he gets it to go. What a fantastic play by Benny who is rising to the moment Glenn with his second goal of today quarter second of the season for Dylan Benny Greyhounds have scored three straight here in the second two or something like that but they can't let this get any further the other way running that's deflected but goes in anyway yeah it looks like it hit off of somebody in front of the crease collison you, 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 you hate to see a player get to the middle of the field which they do nice job ball you can see it right that's there exactly what they do and higgins makes it count look at you nostradamus well you could just see it as as the ball was behind the cage Defense of Hopkins was getting sucked to conversion there by Higgins, as you're going to see the skip pass up top. Quick release, offside high, difficult play there for Marcia. With the heat, Seth Higgins. Not going to force the issue. Instead, work it back to McGillicuddy, and McGillicuddy delivers. Well, I think probably surprise there is what you have to say by Marcio. Seemed to surprise Marcio as I'm thinking, don't do it, but he's rewarded with great on ball defensive play with an opportunity to shoot and score. Just the second goal of McGillicuddy's career, the short stick defensive midi from Connecticut. Seconds. Underneath, Minicus, ooh, he was trying to make a move to get inside, but he was just pushed off that path enough. 
13 seconds. Shooting low and delivering Murphy. Great job there by, by Murphy. I think he shot it off. Phillips sends it back behind. Johns Hopkins moved into the top 10 this week in both polls. After that thrilling win over Georgetown, come from behind fashion in the second half. Boy, Hopkins had a little spinning defensively for a while there. Ball still has to be found. And it'll be scooted out. Nice job of Goose in that one into safety, allowing Hughes to get it. Hughes was trying to give it right back to Middleton, but thankfully, there was another white shirt behind him, and Mustang Sally is going to get rewarded with his second goal of the year. Well, I think that starts with Hughes, if I'm, if I'm not. I think they're going to be comfortably in the top 10 of both polls unless something crazy happens in the next 17 minutes. Nice ball reversal there by Loyola offensively. Here's a matchup that looks like they might want to exploit. Higgins with the short stick. No, he's got space in front of him. Doesn't force the issue. Still 30 seconds on the shot clock. Hung up in trouble. A good job to keep moving by McCullough. And because of that, Evan James is able to get free. So, Loyal, you've seen that multiple times today, Ron, but you have to make those smart decisions over and over and over again if you want to have a successful season. Hopkins trying to get one before the quarter comes to a close. They have not scored here in the third. Move to the middle. Pesco denied. Degnan, however. Garrett Degnan with 3.8 seconds left in the quarter on the rebound. Puts it home. How did that, how did that possession start? Because he took a shot of the season and the 80th goal of his career. And that was not stout. That was the post. For Degnan now. 17 consecutive games with a goal. You can see Coach Van Arsdale talking to McGillicuddy right now. I'm assuming he's saying some version is what I've been saying. Bill team, right, who turned around, beat Duke. We know Jacksonville's for real, is that's why. And they followed it up. He said they handled their success. Everybody was, you know, giving them some attaboys, and they turned around and they were able to beat. And he pointed that out. As much as they were celebrating, oh, my word, in front. And stuffing it at home, the freshman, Minicus, his second of the day, makes a 12-3. Yeah, maybe another surprise there, surprise goal there for Loyola. As Minicus really hasn't shown the ability to win that matchup all day, but he does off the restart. As you'll see here, just beats his matchup clean and goes low to low. Difficult there for Marcio as, as Minicus just beats him to the spot. And let me follow that up. He was very declarative. We've got to prove that we can My players eat more easily. Right now, Loyola's got the attention of the college lacrosse world. Still work to do to finish this one off, leading 12-3. Collison picks it back up. Spins back free inside and scores. Wow, you don't, you don't see that often. you got to really credit Collison there and somewhat as he's trying to pull, force Collison out, as you see right here, applying pressure. Collison does a nice job handling that and then rolling and slide. Difficult for the slide to get there quickly. Great job there by Collison. Second of the day, back-to-back multi-goal games for Collison. He had two in the loss to Carolina on Tuesday. Executing just some of the basics. Late in games, particularly when they have the lead. Collison. It's not impossible if Hopkins could get one or two here. I don't know about the decision on that shot, however. That ball will stay on this side of midfield. Still 30 seconds left on the shot clock for Hopkins. I certainly get that you're feeling the pressure. If there's any path back into this game, you got to score goals, but you can't just throw anything in the cage. That one won't get on goal. That was a really nice offensive set there for Hopkins. Loyola got lucky with a trail check, but... Bean was beat, and that allows Brendan Grimes to get free. Yeah, you see Loyola's defense getting a really heavy dose of down screens and, and, and picks with the offensive player trying to get to the middle of the field. And they did so successfully there as, as Grimes gets to the middle. When he gets his hands free, he has a, a rocket of a left-hand shot. 12-5 now, Loyola with 5.53 left to go in the fourth. Second goal of the day, fifth goal of the season. 
Not really. Okay. Uh, again, I think he two men open up top. Uh, he, he, he did exactly what Hopkins wanted him to do as a faceoff man. Gain possession and try to convert on Mar Marcial. If he does it, which he didn't, and they get you know, rebound, potentially fast break the other way. 13th save of the day for Marcio. Now, now they Hopkins. Pulled him, they pulled him out of the cage. Yep. Continuing the run, and that's a wide open net. Taken advantage of by Austin Cote. You live by the sword, you die by the sword, Glenn. And that is that advantage back up to eight goals as you see him get in on the inside. Marcel just a little bit too late, and I think that slide there at the end caused an injury, and we can't tell exactly who yeah, that's has hurt at this point for Hopkins. I'm trying to figure that out right now. Can I? Under 20 seconds on the possession clock. A little might have drawn a penalty there on that, but they do not. But great job there by Minnick is hanging in there on the ride. After Jaronski had taken it away. I mean, hey. Interesting Jaronski with the long pole now. And oh, very nearly. Did it go over? They're going to say yes. Count it. Yeah, great job there by Jaronski. You know, Loyola does not take body there. They opt to try to swing sticks and let Jaronski split that double team. As I thought Whitaker may have made the save, but he does not. Look at that face dodge here. Old school face dodge. He learned that when he was like six years old, but I probably <laughs> thought, why am I doing this? Right. This is not gonna be relevant <laughs> yeah, at all right. in my career. As most kids, the defense did a great job as a whole, as you see Sherwood now. Bauer to Grimes up top. Grimes steps down. Boy, he held on to that for. May have waited too long, and I think that allowed Josh Ferry to get a stick on it as Ferry now goes to play the ball. But, yeah, you know, Glenn, you said it. Loyola really handled their business today. Yep. Handled this very maturely in front of a really large crowd. And it, it, it really shows their maturity for a really young team, as you see Degnan convert with 38 seconds to go to get Hopkins on the board with their the fact that the 2012 national championship team was not ranked before the season they know it can be done a couple of good fakes bounce shot won't go for Bauer yeah, Ten nice seconds job to there play. by Whitaker you know again coming in is you know at, when the game is not in doubt but showing that hey if called upon he can really handle business Stuart Phillips will pat the stats with one second remaining. First goal today, third of the year, second point of the contest, fourth of the season. Kind of giving that Hopkins band an opportunity late in this contest to they're gonna stick around. strut their yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're going to stick around for the women's game. They're going to ESPN.